Hi everybody, so this is the sequel to Tuesday's video. I don't usually like doing two of the same kinds of videos right in a row, but I was out of town last week, so this seemed like the perfect opportunity, and they go together. So this is the solo and coda that follow the Rosadagio in Act 1 of Sleeping Beauty. So let's go through it. So the friends have just danced, and you have a bit of a break, and so you come back on, you greet your mother again. She says, hello darling, are you having a lovely time? Show them what you got, girl. So now it's her turn to kind of uh, perform for the guests and flirt with her princes a little bit more. So you over there, and you over there, and now it's my turn for an hour-long solo, basically. So this step is super hard to control. That was really good, but right there, I lose my balance. You're supposed to go to fourth, but I just went to tondu. Again, thinking on your feet, you know, it's better to kind of change the step than to fall over. A little cautious on that one, added the pot of beret. An attitude, rolling down, making eye contact. Again, eye contact, especially with Aurora, is super important. You know, it's not, it's, while the audience is important, it's more about the princes on the stage, your guests, the king and queen. You know, Aurora's not a, hey, look at me role, you know. It's more about flirting with these princes and trying to decide, and you're a princess, and you're shy, and all of that. So, see, looking at people, making eye contact with the princes, you know, acknowledging the audience, but not really. It's much more important to stay in the story. So these little hops, this is a nod to the third act solo, similar step. These are a little bit harder. Trying to make them interesting because you do do about 16 of them. I think I get a little excited at these last couple, like, ooh, and ooh, <laughs> a little bit excited on those. Now these pirouettes coming up, it's harder to do on a guest performance because you don't have a conductor. This is pre-recorded. Usually right here, the conductor will finish with you. So when the music is pre-recorded, you've got to kind of hope for the best. This pirouette, I overshoot. Oops. <laughs> and like I told you in the wedding pot at a classical ballet, everything's in threes, so third time. Little flick of the hands there. Fourth time step change is this one. <laughs> this one, watch. I do pirouette and I detourne out of it and I get stuck right here. I'm like, oh, what am I doing? Okay, well, make it cute. Next step, <laughs> acknowledging the princes again. This step is so awkward. You feel like you're completely turned in. At least I did. Felt like I was so turned in. Um, because also you're running out of steam here. Oh, I didn't acknowledge Bobby in the green. Sorry, Bobby. Should have looked at you. Um, yeah, right about here, you've done the Rosadagio, you, this solo is a million years long, and you've got nothing. And this manege coming up at New York City Ballet when I did it, you go around twice. Here at the gig, I just went around once, this PK turn, manege. So you, you technically, in New York, we made two circles. By the end, I literally couldn't see. It was like, please just let me get out of this decently. I mean, you, <laughs> it, I was so grateful on the gig that there was only one circle because, oh my goodness, going around twice, you, you, you can't see it, the thing at all. So you get another little break because the friends start the coda, and this is my favorite part of the whole act because you just fly, because you know all your hard stuff is over, and now you can have fun. <laughs> you know, the Rose of is over, the hard solo is over, so you can just tear up the stage, and it's just like, yes! <laughs> um, this little step two, this cabriole coupe romper, say, I love that. You just sail it around, if you're odd especially. Love that. Um, and even all the people on the stage with you know you've made it over the hurdle. So look, right here, it's like, I did it! <laughs> Yay! And they know, you know? This step I overshoot. I'm supposed to end the king and queen. And I have to arabesque backwards. Whoops. <laughs> Little over, overdone there. And here comes Carabas, and the goal is to pretend you don't know she's there, yet not run over her um, with the chene. And she gives you the spindle, because every 16-year-old gets a spindle for their birthday. That's not weird at all. <laughs> Am I right? <laughs> um... You show your mother, look what I have. And she's like, oh, that's lovely, I think. Maybe, what is that? Um, you show all your friends, isn't this cool? A spindle. I mean, if you stop and think about it, ballet is sometimes very weird. Like, a girl gets a spindle for her 16th birthday. Like, come on. Anyway, right about here, my shoes usually were completely gone. And I, in my brain going, I hope I have another pair for act two. Um, so thankfully, 
balancing is over, but I remember my shoes being totally gone, and here's the drama. And the thing about this, you know, one of the things that they were telling us when we did this is Aurora, not only she doesn't feel well, but she's been sheltered in, in a castle and a princess. She's never seen blood before. She's probably never felt ill before like this. You know, nothing bad has ever happened to her. So it's more of, yes, I pricked my finger, but isn't that cool, <laughs> you know? It's almost exhilarating for her in a way. Like, oh, wasn't that amazing? And, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm really, I'm fine. And, oh, wait a minute. I'm, I'm not okay. Um, and I tried to show more, you know, you can't overdo it because then it looks fake. But at the same time, you, know, you have to think about probably she also felt like she was going to be sick. So I tried to do that a little bit. Instead of just, oh, I don't feel well. You know, you kind of have to make it a little bit realistic, even though you are in a tutu. That's what tends to happen with tutu ballets, is that it gets very um, pretty. And right there, you can't be too pretty. You've got to be a little more realistic. Um, and right about here, you're like, I'm really happy I'm almost done <laughs> because I'm, I'm on my last legs. And right here, watch my bottom hand. Look what I have to do. Little trick of the trade. Even though you're dead, you got to hold your tutu down. See that hand? Otherwise the tutu would stick straight up. So it's just kind of odd because you're supposed to be tired and ill and you gotta hold, hold your costume down. Um, but yeah, and right about here, you're trying not to breathe too hard. That's the other tricky thing, is trying not to breathe too hard because you're supposed to look dead. Um, so it's a matter of kind of breathing sideways instead of breathing up and down. But anyway, that is act one and I will do more of the vision act too. I, I haven't completely finished that yet, so we will get to that as well. If you miss my hacks for improving your ballet technique quickly, it's right there, you can click it to watch. Love you all so, so much. A new vlog is going up on the second channel soon. Uh, hope you're doing well, and I'll see you next time.